Hey third grade, this is your math video for lesson 6.5. So what we are going to be looking at is multiplication and division. So we're going to use something called a multiplication or a division diagram to make sense of and solve number stories. Before we do that, we're just going to do a few quick mental math fact family problems. For this video lesson, all you are going to need is a whiteboard. We are not going to be doing a workbook page. So just a whiteboard or a piece of paper. So first, I want you to start by solving these three problems. So with this one, um, what you'll see is a slash like this. This is another sign for division. So this would be 25 divided by 5, 36 divided by 6, and 27 divided by 9. So let's look at the first one, 25 divided by 5. How could you think of this, if division is still a little tricky, how could you think of this in terms of multiplication? You could do 5 times what would equal 25. That's another way to think of this problem. So 25 divided by 5 equals what? Well, we know that 5 times 5 equals 25. So 25 divided by 5 would be 5. So here's just an example of what the multiplication problem would look like if you use that to help you solve the division problem. So now that you've seen this example, try 36 divided by 6. Try that on your whiteboard. 36 divided by 6, or 6 times what equals 36? So for this one, 36 divided by 6 would equal 6. It's a lot of 6's because 6 times 6 equals 36. And then our last one is 27 divided by 9. 27 divided by 9. Think of what 9 times what number would equal 27? So for this one, 27 divided by 9 would equal 3 because 9 times 3 equals 27. All right, now we are going to get into looking at problems um, with number stories. So with this one, we are going to read number stories and we are going to try to solve problems. So this one says record at least two different number models with a question mark or another symbol for the unknown to represent this story. So it says Annette has bags of grapes for her team. In each bag, there are five grapes. There are 45 grapes in all. How many bags does Annette have? So I want you on your whiteboard to try to write at least two different number models with a question mark. So with the number that's not known, you would put the question mark. So try that and then I will show you two examples. So you can pause the video while you write that on your whiteboard. All right, so let's check if your number models um, were correct. So the two that we had here are question mark times five equals 45. So a lot of the time I would say like, what number times five equals 45? Another way you could write it is with division. So 45 divided by what number or question mark equals five. So in this case, um, the slash mark again right here shows the division sign. So here are two ways that you could represent this number model, or I'm sorry, this number story using different number models. So question mark times 5 equals 45. 45 divided by what equals 5? Because we know there are 5 grapes in each bag, and there's 45 grapes total, so we're trying to figure out how many bags does Annette have. So if you look at the next slide here, this is what I was also saying in the directions where you could also use another symbol. So what that means, uh, when we have an unknown value in math, a lot of the time we will use a letter to represent that unknown value. Uh, so in this case, we're trying to fit, find how many bags, so we could use the letter B to represent the number of bags. So instead of putting a question mark, we could say B times 5 equals 45, or 45 divided by 5 equals B. I know it's crazy looking at uh, letters and numbers together in math class, um, but it just makes a little bit more sense uh, and it helps you solve the number story, um, putting kind of like a face to that unknown number. So you're looking at B uh, and you know that that represents the total number of bags. So in this case, what times 5 would equal 45? Did you guys figure out what your final answer would be? So we know that nine times five equals 45. So we would say that there would be nine bags with five grapes in each bag. 
So again, this is just showing you kind of a brief introduction into moving into our lesson. Um, so we talked about different number models um, and how we solve those using a number story and then how we can assign a letter to an unknown value. So what this kind of looks like when we put it all together, this is what it looks like. Um, what you see in blue is the multiplication or division number diagram. This is what the diagram is that you can use to help you solve these problems. The purpose of them is just to help you organize um, your information. So here are kind of the steps in what you do. So first you read the problem. So it says, Anna has eight bags of rubber bands. Each bag has the same number of rubber bands. Anna has 56 rubber bands in all. How many rubber bands are in each bag? Record an equation to match the story and then solve. So once you read the question or the number story, you try to look for the key components of it. So what do we understand from reading the story? Well, we know that Anna has eight bags of rubber bands. I put that in the one rectangle. And we know that she has 56 rubber bands in all. So that's kind of the information that we know. Now, what do we need to find out? What is the question we are trying to solve? Is how many rubber bands are in each bag? So we know how many are total. We know how many <clears throat> bags she has, but we don't know how many rubber bands are in each bag. So what you need to do is you need to kind of come up with a plan. You need to figure out how you're going to solve this problem. And that's where the diagram comes into play. So with this one, they have the diagram already labeled for you. So you have your number of bags, the rubber bands per bag, and the rubber bands in all. So here, how many bags are there? There's eight. How many rubber bands per bag? We don't know. That's our unknown number. So we are going to put an R for rubber bands instead of a question mark. <clears throat> and then how many rubber bands in all? There are 56 rubber bands in all. So now we're starting to, uh, you know, plan out um, what we are going to do. We have our information laid out in front of us. Now we just need to execute it, meaning we need to solve the problem. So there are a couple ways you could do this. I have listed here um, 8 times R equals 56, okay? So you're trying to maybe do a multiplication problem. 8 times R, which is our unknown number, equals 56. So you ask yourself, Eight times what equals 56? Well, in this case, the answer would be seven. Eight times seven equals 56. But that might not be a fact you know off the top, you know, off the top of your head. So you could do a helper fact. You could do eight times eight is 64. Um, and then you could take away a group of eight, which would bring you down to 56. Um, you could, you know, do an add a group, subtract a group, anything like that. Um, whatever you need to solve to get to your answer. If eight times seven equals 56 is one of your fact power, one of the facts that you have fact power over and you can just do it like that, great. If not, you need to kind of add to your plan and figure out how you're going to solve that problem. So the one way I mentioned was doing that near square, which would be eight times eight um, to help you figure it out, okay? So this is just um, an example problem of how you find your information put it into uh, your diagram, and then solve for the problem using an equation. The equation here would be the 8 times r equals 56. All right, so on your whiteboards, now it's your turn, okay? Um, you followed along with me, um, hopefully, so now you're going to try your problem on your own. So what we need to do is we need to first read the problem, and then we need to figure out how we're going to plan and solve for it. So it says there are 72 third graders at field day. The gym teacher wants to make, uh, wants to group them into teams of eight. How many teams can they make? Okay. So think about what you know about this problem. We know how many third graders are at field day. There's 72. And we know that they want to be grouped into teams of eight. And so what are we trying to solve? How many teams can they make? So on your board, I want you to draw this diagram. So you'll have three boxes, one for teams, players per team, and third graders in all, okay? Teams, players for teams, and third graders in all. So once you have that, I want you to try and fill it in. So do we know how many teams there are? Do we know how many players per team? And do we know how, third, how many third graders there are total or all 
in all. So we do know how many players per team, which is the middle box, which would be eight. It says that he uh, or the gym teacher wants to put them into teams of eight. And then it says third graders in all. We do know the total number of third graders. There are 72 third graders. What we don't know is how many teams that they're going to make. So we would put the letter T for teams. So now what number model could we use to solve this problem? How could we solve this problem? I want you to pause this video while you try to solve this problem now that we have our diagram filled in. All right, so let's see how we solved it. So here we could do T times eight equals 72. And then you would say, okay, what times eight equals 72? Well, in our last problem, we did eight times eight equals 64. And then if you add another group of eight, you would get to 72. So it would be nine groups of eight would equal 72. So how many teams would we be able to make with eight students on each team? We would be able to make nine teams. So T would equal nine. So this is, again, just a way to organize um, when you're trying to solve for a number story. And let's try one more problem. So go ahead and erase your whiteboards or find a new part of your paper. And we have one more problem we're going to do together. So let's look at our problem. There are six fruit bowls and a total of 59 oranges to divide equally among the bowls. How many oranges should be placed in each bowl? So here's your diagram. Fruit bowls, oranges per bowl, and oranges in all. So look at your number story. What do we know? Well, we know there are six fruit bowls and a total of 54 oranges. So what are we trying to figure out? We are trying to figure out how many oranges should be placed in each bowl. So let's look here. Okay. So we know there are six bowls. There are a total of 54 oranges, and we do not know how many oranges per bowl. So we would put a B there. So now what we're trying to figure out is we are trying to figure out how many oranges are going to be placed in each bowl. So here are a few examples, but I want you to try them on your own on your whiteboard before you start the video again. So here we go. So we could do it two ways. We could do six times B equals 54 or a division, or a division problem, 54 divided by B equals six. So in this case, six times B equals 54. What does B equal? Well, B would equal nine because six times nine equals 54. Again, with this one, a fact that you could use could be like six times 10. Uh, six times 10 equals 60 and minus a group of six would be 54, which would be six times nine. So that's where our previous lessons of multiplication strategies can come into play. But with this one, um, we would have nine oranges per bowl. Okay, so moving forward, whenever you come across a multiplication or division problem where you have to solve it, you can use this type of diagram to help you. And then when it comes to the multiplication part of it, this is more just organizing the information. When it comes to the multiplication part, that's where you can use your strategies like doubling, near squares, um, or adding or subtracting a group. All right, good job, guys.